I've recently done a few videos demonstrating how to use the data transfer modifier. In this video, I'm going to show you another great use for it that can fix shading glitches which result from localized detail being added into a polygon mesh that's then subdivided. Anytime you have a quad-based mesh that is then subdivided and you then need to integrate localized small details onto the surface that aren't on polygon boundaries, you can easily end up with shading and topology issues that can be a pain to get rid of. So let's take a look at this car model, because this is a perfect situation where a small surface detail may need to be integrated into otherwise smoothly flowing surface topology. Here you can see part of the front of the car where a square design element is modeled into the front fascia. On the left is without the use of the data transfer modifier, and on the right with it. So let's dive in and set this up. If we look at this photograph of this car, you can see that there is this sort of squarish cutout, and there's an even smaller detail on the topology of this surface. So that's what we're going to do. If we jump over to the start file, this is a model that I've used a couple of times, and it actually had an original design element here that I ended up removing because when I was rendering it, the topology just wasn't very good. So let's focus down on this area. This little rounded square is the element that needs to get integrated into it. But you can see from the surface topology, we only have edges and vertices at just discrete locations. And trying to integrate these small, small details into these surface topologies is going to be really challenged without breaking up and causing contour problems. Let's come into the car model itself and isolate what it is that we want to work on. Let's come into edit mode. And I think, in fact, let's come over into select circle. And I'm going to highlight just the area that we really essentially want to focus on. The first thing that I need to do is separate a duplicate of this geometry. Press Shift and D to duplicate that, the Escape key, and then P key to separate that selection to become its own object over here. So let's press the Tab key and come over, and we're going to rename this immediately to Pole Normals from me. Something descriptive like that. Let's go ahead and hide that. We're going to reference that later. Come back to the main model, and let's just isolate the area that we want to work on, and then hide everything else. Press Shift and H, and it'll hide the rest of the model so we can focus on just this area. In fact, I've got a mirror modifier on right now. Let's go ahead and turn that off so we really can simplify it. I want to burn this rounded squarish object into that geometry to form that design element. Let's just deselect everything. We're still in edit mode. And I want to basically sort of align up this squarish design element so it's parallel to the view. Come over here and select in the outliner this cutout profile, and then come up to mesh. And we're going to use a knife project to cut that into our primary object. Notice that right now I have the uh, transformation axis set to normal, and that's going to be useful for what we're going to do. But now that we've gotten that cutout profile burned in, let's go ahead and just turn that off. So we've added this localized detail into these fairly crude larger polygon meshes, and that's where the problem arises, because when we subdivide this, it's the vertices that really get shifted in the subdivision, and we're introducing all of these little vertices into this planar area of these polygons, and that's going to cause all kinds of shading issues. But let's go ahead and proceed, and we'll see how this plays out. Let's press the I key and inset just a little bit, and then I'm going to press E key to separate this to become its own object. And let's leave edit mode. We'll come over here, and we're going to call this design element something descriptive. Let's go ahead and hide that temporarily, and let's come back and finish up the modeling. Whoops. It rotates around the object's origin, which is way off. So let's come back into edit mode, and let's reselect that perimeter so we can see this. Press the F key to refill this. 
press the E key and I'm going to move. It's going to logically guess that I want to move along the normal direction. Press E one more time and pull that down and then press X to delete that. We don't want to leave these n-gons the way these are. I have spoken in other tutorials about the fact that within a subdivision surface model, you can have n-gons from time to time, but this is not one of those situations. These will subdivide in on themselves and cause all kinds of problems. I'm just immediately going to come in and bring up the context menu and triangulate those faces. Then the next thing we need to do is come in and let's select this outer boundary. So now we're going to take this, press Shift and E, and then one key and return, and that will turn that into a hard boundary. So these, these polygons here can't get subdivided and spread out over into these large irregular triangles. It's a pretty important function. So if we were to come back over here and turn on subdivision, let's take this up to a value of two. You know, had we not done that, this would have been all irregular and it would have pulled shading out and just messy. So we don't want that to happen. So we've now added this new geometry into the center of faces, and that's just going to cause problems for the subdivision because it's going to end up flattening out that subdivision, whereas originally we had nice, smooth, flowing curvature here. So that's basically the dilemma we have, and then we have all these triangles. So let's come over, leave edit mode, and we're going to come back to the what I call design elements. We'll select that. Tab key goes into edit mode. A key, and we're going to inset to produce just a little bit of a gap between the two elements, just a little bit like that. Let's come over into face mode, command or control I, and then X, delete those faces. A, I again, and we'll pull in about like that. Now, we need to extrude this out. You'll note that I'm in my transform orientation is set to normal, and that's what I want. So let's double click to select the boundary to go all the way around. There we go. Press E and then Z to go along the local, that locally calculated vector, and then option Z to go into outline. Press E again and then Z and we'll pull down about like that just to produce enough geometry. It's going to be small detail, but we'll go ahead and do that. Option Z to take us out of X ray. Then we need to come in and just patch this together. So let's come over into vertex mode, take those two vertices, press the J key to connect those two paths, J key, and we'll just patch this up to produce a polygon mesh that's appropriate for subdivision surfaces. We could come across and do it like that, J, J, and then I can come into these corners. Let's see how these triangulate. So that's good. Okay, so we've gotten that ready now. And then I can double click to select this boundary going all the way around. There we go. Shift E and then tap one to set the crease to a full value of one. Now I've already got a subdivision modifier on here and we can go ahead and turn that on. But when we look at this from the top, you can still see that it's based on the original structure. So it's got an angle here, and then it's flat on the other side of that angle. But we want it to have the appearance of the smooth flowing curvature that the original front fascia piece had. So let's come in now and take a look at this with shading turned on. Let's go ahead and turn subdivision back on over here. Let's come into viewport shading. Now, right off the bat, just at a glance, it looks okay. It doesn't look super bad, but as soon as we turn up the angle that we're viewing at this, we have more contrast. You can clearly see that there are shading glitches and shading stuff going on that's not really appealing, and that's going to show up, especially on a reflective surface. So let's come in and take a look at this. If we come over and go into matte cap, and then we change this into different types of surfaces, we'll really begin to see just, you see the waviness and this reflection around there. Let's take a look at another one where we have these stripe lines on there. And the stripe lines 
clearly show wonkiness. We can look at this left to right. You can kind of clearly see there's a lot of messiness in the reflections because of that geometry and the surface normals that are just being calculated based on that new geometry that was put right in the middle of flat polygon faces that are being subdivided. Messy, messy. Let's go ahead and go back into just normal studio shading there. And this is where we come in and we apply the data transfer modifier. And the way we want to do this in terms of the stacking order is we want the subdivision modifier to be there, and then we want the data transfer to happen on the subdivided geometry. So if we come back over to the pole normals for me geometry, let's make sure that this is subdivided to a level of two. If we take a look at this, press the tab key. In fact, we don't need the mirror modifier for that. So let's go ahead and remove that. And let's turn off optimal display. Let's turn on the subdivision here. That's a pretty good density for the, for the polygon mesh. It'll very easily pull vertex normals from either vertices or extrapolated between vertices on this nice mesh. So let's come back over. I'm going to turn it off because, again, we don't need to see it. In fact, we don't want to see that. Let's come over to this, and we're going to add a data transfer. We want to make sure it's right underneath subdivision. Okay, let's collapse that so all we see is this. And we're going to pull normals from the pull normals from me patch mesh. Now, before we can do anything else, we need to tell it what to constrain itself to in, in terms of vertices. So let's come in, let's come back into edit mode for this object, this front fascia component. And I'm going to reselect all of these. There we go. So let's convert over into vertex. So these vertices right here, along with these vertices coming out, we're going to create a vertex group with. These are the vertices that we want to transfer from the other pull normals from me perfect mesh. So we'll come down here, vertex groups, click new, and we'll call blend verts something descriptive make sure we assign it so when the set when these get subdivided this vertex assignment is going to get transferred to those all of the messiness of polygons encompassed anywhere in this selection are going to get pulled from that pristine mesh okay so that's one now let's come back over to this one and let's do the same thing for this this one we only want to have i'm in selection circle switch over to vertex mode, and then we'll come back over vertex groups. And we're also going to name this blend verts. It's on a different mesh, so it can be named the same and make sure and click assign. Okay. So now that we've gotten both those assigned, let's come back over here to the data transfer, and we're going to restrict this operation to the blend verts. Then we come down, activate face corner normal data, expand it, and we're going to be operating on custom normals. And I have found amongst these different options, really the best one that it seems to work for me is nearest face interpolated. Okay, so that's a sign. Now let's do the same thing here. Let's come add a data transfer modifier, make sure it sits underneath subdivision. So it's going to operate on the subdivided polygons. Whole normals for me is the source object, and it too will be restricting to blend verts, face, corner, normal data, custom normals, and then the interpolated mode, nearest face interpolated. Those are both now operating and functional. So let's come in and take a look at this. So again, in this front mode, it doesn't look too different until we pull and we start looking at it from the top and look how clean it is. Let's come over and turn everything off. We don't see all those crazy, messy, interpolated vertices. When you look closely, you can still see that the geometry itself is kind of adhering to that, that boundary. But from a shading standpoint, it looks fantastic.
So let's take a look at it here with our matte cap modes. And you see how clean that is now? Because it's pulling the vertices from the pristine mesh. And then let's come back up here and finally come back to this one right here. And we can see, do you see how clean it is with that reflection? Just for giggles, let's come over here and turn off on the body itself. Let's just turn off the data transfer modifier. You can immediately see, and let's turn it off for the design element. You could see exactly the wonkiness that we see. You can clearly see it right there. Let's go ahead and turn them back on data transfer and then data transfer and look at that. Really, really awesome modifier. So I hope you found this to be a useful tutorial.